welcome to worship with First United Methodist Church of Santa Monica. We are grateful for your presence both online and in person as we gather making our way through the season of Lent. A season where we are invited to slow down, to listen and seek deeper faith, to choose love, and to look for opportunities to give. We give thanks as we move through this season together. A special welcome if you are joining us for the first time. There is a link in this video. There's a sign-in book in the back, and then we have a QR code on your order of worship on the back uh, where you can uh, get connected, uh, find out more about our ministries, our mission work, um, and get more connected to the community. And as, so as we move into worship today, I invite you to take a deep breath, to settle in, to take a moment, to, to bring, make sure your mind is here along with your body. In the, our world full of noise and busyness, God is still present with us. God is still speaking, and we are invited to take this time to listen, to be present so let us turn our hearts and our attention to the worship of God.
join together in the call to worship. We are wayfarers following roads to the ends of the earth, pilgrims on our way to the end of the age. We'll travel lightly, travel together, learn as we go. We are disciples. Our mission is love. The journey is long. We'll travel with humility. No task is too small. We are servants. The cross is our compass. Love is our sign. church family. Can everyone give a big wave and say good morning? Ah, so who remembers what season we are in right now at church? Life. Yeah, what is it, Lukey? It, it, we are definitely in winter, but what season like in our church? Cow. Cow. <laughs> Lent. Can you guys say that with me? Lent. So we are in the season of Lent. And I have this really, really cool book I would like to help share with you guys so we can better understand how we too can prepare for Lent, which is the six weeks right before Easter. Let's see. During Lent, we get ready. We listen, we wonder, we pray. Sometimes we use words or music or colors. Like Jesus, we make time for God. What are all the kids doing? Are they all singing? Yeah. During Lent, we clean our houses and give away what we do not need. We share so everyone can have enough. Like Jesus, we make space for good things to grow. During Lent, we share meals with people. We send greetings to anyone who is sad or sick. When someone seems lonely, we smile and say hello. Like Jesus, we make room. So, things that we might do during Lent include cleaning our rooms. Who here likes to clean their room? Oh, I don't either. <laughs> or our homes, and give away to what we do not need. We share so everyone can have enough. We share meals, clothes, our talents, and our time with others during the Lent season. We also practice giving. Our church's missions council has chosen a special giving opportunity during Lent. We are collecting food for a place called the 580 Cafe at UCLA. It provides college students with a place to hang out, have fun, eat snacks, and make new friends. And sometimes these students don't have enough healthy food. So that's where we come in. 
This month, we will be collecting food items like peanut butter. Who likes peanut butter? Oh. I like peanut butter. And rice and pasta and sauce, popcorn, pretzels, and other things. We have two bins, one in the back of the church in the place called the Narthex, which is where you come into the sanctuary each week, and one next to our welcome table during coffee hour. We can all help by bringing food items to donate. You can bring one thing each Sunday and place it in the bin or collect them over the next few weeks and make a big donation later on. We will be collecting donations during the entire Lenten season. And I know when we all work together, we can make a positive difference for the students at the 580 Cafe. So let's go ahead and put our hands together and bow in prayer. Can you guys repeat after me? Dear God, thank you for this season of Lent. Help us to grow closer to you by giving from our hearts and sharing with others. Amen. We take time during worship to celebrate our mission and common life together. We lift up a couple of things coming up. You can also look at your insert for details and more opportunities. This Friday, March 1st, the Labyrinth will be open from 1 to 3 p.m. for a walking meditation. Our Finger Labyrinths will be available as well. The chapel will be open for prayers. All are invited in this restorative time. The season of Lent has begun a time of introspection and self-examination of our lives and our relationship with God. To meaningfully move through the season, we have a variety of opportunities to engage our hearts and minds and to be of service in our community. You can pick up your Lenten devotionals as you leave worship from the welcome table during coffee hour. They're also available to receive as daily emails. Our Lenten art exhibit featuring photography by Emily Payne is available in the Fireside Room after worship during Lent. Next Sunday, March 3rd, Emily will be here for a meet and greet after worship to share more about the inspiration behind her photographs. One way we seek to care for one another is through the monthly blood pressure screenings. This opportunity is free and will happen today after worship in the alcove of Simpkins Hall. As mentioned in our children's message, one aspect of the Lenten journey is the practice of giving and serving others. Jamie talked a little about our Lenten food drive for the 580 Cafe serving UCLA students. This vital ministry provides not only a space for students to have conversation, learning, and dialogue together, but it serves as a place of collective care and support to students, especially the 580 Cafe food cupboard, which provides important support to students who have limited access to healthy food options. How are we helping? During Lent, we are collecting items to support this food cupboard ministry for students. This supply the supply list is in your uh, order of worship, and donation bins are located in the narthex as you leave worship, and also at coffee hour next to the welcome table. Details for all these ministries, as well as ongoing opportunities during Lent, are in your order of worship and on the website. Or stop by the welcome table if you have any questions. We give thanks for God's creating spirit that continues to give us life and leads us forward. Thanks be to God. And now, uh, our senior pastor, Reverend Patricia Ferrand, Fer Ferris, will present our moments in mission about Claremont School of Theology. Thank you, Whitney. It's a privilege to take a few moments this morning as chair of the Board of Trustees of the Claremont School of Theology to bring a few updates about the school. It's over 138 years old, the only United Methodist Seminary west of the Rockies, training clergy and lay leaders for local congregations, nonprofits, and for teaching 
all across the country, even around the world. The school began in the San Fernando Valley, moved to USC, and then to Claremont in 1957. Now, new models of theological education, hybrid and online, mean that the large, expensive campus is no longer central to our mission. The school is moving to Westwood United Methodist Church. You're all invited to come over this afternoon from 3 to 5 p.m. to see how what once was a preschool at Westwood has been upsized to accommodate classes and offices. We are also asking for your financial support at this critical juncture. A recent arbitration ruling following a long litigation proceeding has been costly and did not produce the results for which we had hoped. So we are hard at work to raise $3 million in a special appeal. I am deeply grateful to our own United Women in Faith who have made a generous gift to this campaign. Information on how to give is available in today's Order of Worship insert and on our webpage. Thank you in advance. This congregation alone has benefited from the leadership of CST grads, including Tricia Guerrero, Robert English, Camille Maddock, Brad Beeman, Sehi Han, and Don Shelby, who graduated from the USC School of Theology, as it was then known. Please keep CST, its students, faculty, and staff in your prayers as we look forward to a bright future. I'll be around at coffee hour to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. The gospel today is from Mark, chapter 8, verses 31 through 38. Then Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. He said all of this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, if any of you want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of the Father with the holy angels. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We continue through this season of Lent with our theme, Deeper Roots, Wide Spreading Branches. Today's reading from Mark's Gospel, which Carrie just read for us, brings an interesting perspective. Jesus is teaching his disciples, teaching them some really hard things about how his life will unfold, his life and his death. 
And Peter is so upset by all this that he basically tells Jesus to stop, for this can't possibly be true. Peter doesn't want it to be true. He doesn't want to hear it. He wants to live in his own version of how this story should be. Don't tempt me, Peter, Jesus seems to say. We must keep our eyes on the big picture, God's purpose, divine things, not on the narrow confines of our limited human minds. Which brings us straight away to the cross, the symbol of both death and life. The words we hear from Mark's gospel go to the heart of our vocation and calling. To that crowd made up of his disciples and others, Jesus said, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. Now, admittedly, Jesus wasn't into marketing. He's not helping us grow the church here, is he? It's hard enough just to invite someone to come to church with us, isn't it? Of course, there are many things that are fairly easy to pitch. We can talk about the beautiful music, the stained glass windows, the peacefulness of the sanctuary, or the wonderful programs for children and families. We can talk about the small group studies and fellowship groups, or even just the sheer guilty pleasure of a yummy donut once a week. there's a way to take it deeper when people are ready that does have to do with the cross. All kinds of studies and surveys show that people are hungry for meaning and purpose in their lives. They're eager for something to live for and to know that their lives can make a difference. You see, really taking up our cross is another way of saying that we want to live according to the values of Jesus. That we want to be part of building the kingdom of God in this world even now, where everyone is valued and respected, where peace is possible, where the earth itself is cherished, that we want to be part of a community that reaches out to the hungry and the unsheltered and gives them food and a roof over their heads, that we long to be part of a community where compassion and kindness and even just plain old-fashioned civility guide our words and our deeds. There's a saying that sums this up, often attributed to Gandhi, though Gandhi didn't quite say it this way, but it, but it goes like this. Be the change you wish to see in this world. Be the change you wish to see in this world. Be it, be it now. Be it in the words you speak, the choices you make, the priorities you set. Be it in the relationships you build, the values you hold, the sacrifices you make. Taking up our cross means 
taking on this new identity and letting it become our compass, bringing the spirit of life wherever we can to a world hungry for our presence, our witness, and our love. There are a few times in the life of the church when we are marked with the sign of the cross. One is at our baptism when we are marked with the sign of the cross with water on our forehead. Another which we recently experienced is on Ash Wednesday when we are marked with the sign of the cross with ashes on our forehead. It's always interesting to me to see how many people come for that service whom we may only see once a year. People somehow acknowledging that hunger deep within for connection to life and healing far bigger than their own. And another is when we commission our adult and youth service teams. I invite them to hold out their hands, the hands that will build homes and roofs and ramps. And I mark the sign of the cross with oil on those hands, consecrating them to the service they will share with strangers who become friends. In these ways, we take up our cross as the mark of one living already in the freedom and promise of the kingdom of God. Our spiritual work in Lent is to live into the full meaning and power of what it means to live as those signed with the cross. This is our calling and our vocation and how the world and Christ desperately need us now to be strong and faithful. Bill Wiley Kellerman has written, to keep Lent is to discover and remember who in heaven's name we are as person and community. We pray against all confusers and confusions for our true identity and vocation. We know that means standing before the cross and making some choices. The grace of the season is that Jesus makes the choice with us. He's been over the turf and is our brother exactly on that score with us in the struggle of our hearts. Let the further grace be that we make our choice as disciples in the mind and heart of Christ. Martin Luther began each day by making the sign of the cross on his forehead and saying, I am baptized. This is the cross we carry. May it increasingly define who we are. May it be our life's true compass that God might fill us with truth and clothe us with holy living and give us strength for the building of the new realm.
we are wayfarers, following roads to the ends of the earth, pilgrims on our way to the end of the age. We'll travel with humility. No task is too small. We are servants. The cross is our compass. Love is our sign. May our roots grow deep and our branches ever wider as we seek to be the change we wish to see in this world. Amen. come to a time of prayer, a time to listen for God's voice among us. Let us be in prayer. God of boundless goodness, we have come to worship you with our songs, with our words, with our gifts, and with our whole hearts. We are reminded that following in your way of the cross, the way of love and grace, the way of forgiveness, is not an easy path. Strengthen us, we pray, along the way. Guide us through this season that we may not avoid struggle, but open ourselves to blessing. Give us the faith and courage to follow Jesus in the way of love that brings fullness of life to our world. Save us from all that would separate us from you and draw our hearts back into yours. Fill us anew we ask, that our lives can overflow to share your light and hope with each encounter in our day. We take time in our prayers to pray for each other, for the situations of pain and brokenness in our communities and in our world. We pray for strength and healing for Karen Furness. We offer prayers of comfort for Ellie Throckmorton in the death of her husband, Jerry Duncan. And for all who grieve the loss of a loved one, we pray that they might feel your spirit's comfort and sustaining presence. All of these things we keep in our hearts lifting those prayers that remain unspoken. And together we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, friends. I'm Dick Crawford, chair of the Staff Parish Relations Committee for this church. As most of you know, um, at the end of June this year, Patricia Ferris, our dear pastor, will be leaving us for retirement. And so the bishop and the cabinet have been busy uh, determining who will get as their next senior pastor. And as part of that process, I've been asked to read the following letter. Some of you probably saw this in your email on Friday, so it won't be much of a surprise. Dear members of Santa Monica First UMC, on behalf of Bishop Dottie Escobedo Frank and her cabinet, I share with you that after deep prayer and cons consultation, it is Bishop Escobedo Frank's intent to appoint this Reverend Gregory Batson as senior pastor at Santa Monica First UMC as of July 1 this year. Reverend Greg was discerned for this appointment because he brings gifts in proclamation and worship, administrative and financial management, strategic vision and implementation, and a commitment to developing laid leadership. Reverend Greg is a gifted and experienced leader who has served for a number of years in the local churches in the Kelpac Kel Conference and other capacities within and outside the church. Reverend Greg is a spirit-filled leader and preacher with a track record of shepherding congregations following a long-term appointment. As a church leader and developer, he is uniquely gifted to lead Santa Monica FUMC into an era of vibrant growth during such challenging times. Reverend Greg will work together with Reverend Patricia and your lay leadership for a smooth and effective ministry transition. On behalf of our bishop, I thank you for your faithfulness as a congregation over many years. I am excited to see what the next season of ministry will bring to, for, and through your community as you go from strength to strength in partnership with Reverend Greg. In this season of transition, I know you will both celebrate with Reverend Patricia's ministry among you and continue to pray for her and her family as everyone moves through this season of change. In ministry together, Reverend Dr. Siosea Tuitahi, West District Superintendent. Thank you. The community of First UMC Santa Monica actively works to create a place where all people are celebrated and loved, where all can encounter the love and grace of God, and where we serve together to transform the world. There are many ways to connect and give, if you'd like more information, fill out a Let's Connect card found in the pew rack and place it in the offering plate. If you're worshiping online, you will find a link in the description of this video. In a moment, the ushers will come forward to receive our offering. If you're online, you will find links to our secure giving page on our website, in the description of this video, and on our app. 
You can also mail your donation to the church or drop it off at our office any day of the week. Please commit to generously support our ministries and mission, which rely on your financial support. Thank you for your generosity.
together in the unison prayer of dedication. May we forge a new friendship with the earth and discover a new affinity with beauty, with life, with Christ, and in all things were created in heaven and on earth. For all things were created through him and for him. Amen. the love of God reach out and hold us. May Christ always walk alongside us. 
And may the Spirit captivate us with the beauty of holiness and never let us go. Amen. Thank you.